Hello stamping friends, Kelly Atchison at stampabove.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin in the USA. And I'm saying that today because this video is part of the Totally Techniques Global Blog Hop. I was invited by my friend Shanine Moncrief from Australia to join this global blog hop. And the neat thing about it is there's only one demonstrator from each country in this hop. So you're going to have somebody from the US, which is me. You're going to have someone from Australia, someone from New Zealand, somebody from the UK. I think we have somebody from Japan maybe. But you have to complete the blog hop. So you need to go back to my blog if you're finding this video on YouTube. I will have an address for the link to my blog post where you can continue on and see this global hop because everybody's making eclipse cards today. Let's get started. I'm going to show you a really cool coloring technique that I'm going to call bleeding ink. Is that too graphic? I think it's going to be okay because it's all in fun. It doesn't in Involve real blood, just bleeding ink. I think we're going to be okay. I'm going to show you some great tips on how to do the eclipse technique that make it really easy and quick. I think you're going to like it. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is bring in my cardstock layers for the card that I just showed you. I've got a scrap of dapper denim as well as a scrap of our lemon lime twist. And then the card front is three and three quarters by five. I've got a layer of dapper denim that's going to go under that that is five and a quarter by four, a white layer for the inside that's also five and a quarter by four, and then I've got lemon lime twist here that is four and a quarter by 11, and I've scored it at five and a half. So I'm just going to fold that on that score line and burnish it with my bone folder. That's ready to roll. This is our inside layer and I'm just going to quickly stamp this up because it is easy. I'm using the stylized birthday stamp. This is an individual stamp that you can order from me and it's one of my favorite go-to's because it's big and I love the font on it. I'm using the Dapper Denim ink isn't that pretty? I just love this. And then I'm coming in with the stamp set that I chose. And this is the Epic Celebrations. You get six stamps in here. This is free with your $50 order. This is a great stamp set for, I think, kind of baby boomers because, you know, these kind of things were popular when baby boomers were younger. Um, and also, this is a great set for teenagers, whether they're boys or girls. So I have had a lot of fun with it. I'm going to take these crazy little headphones and and it's funny too because these aren't really epic anymore you've got those what do they call those beat no those are beat buds beats beats headphones that cost a fortune if you have any teenagers you know exactly what I'm talking about and I'm just gonna put that right there now here's where my technique comes in whoops I've got a little bit of pink on here let me get that off if you come in while your ink is wet, now this works best if you do it right away, but one of the things I found is that your darker colors can be dry and they still bleed nicely. I did not add any ink to my aqua painter, but you can color because your ink's gonna bleed when you add water to it, and that's kinda cool. I'm gonna show you another thing with this too. So we've got our inside done. I'm just going to use my multi-purpose liquid glue, which seems to have a little bit of a clog in there. I'll have to get that out if it gives me any problems. I'm going to put this right on the inside of our card. And I've got a tall card, but it's going to open this way. And that's just something a little unique I like to do once in a while because, well, because it's unique, right? Now we're going to get to work on the front of our card. And I'm using the large letter framelits. You get the entire alphabet in here, plus the and symbol a question mark, um, a couple dots here. That might have something to do with math. I'm not sure. Yeah, it, it is math. I don't remember what it is, though. It's been a long time, and math is hard. Um, we've got equal symbols. And then you get these other elements, an exclamation point and this cute little flower. You get the greater than, less than symbol, an apostrophe, a plus sign, and... Yeah, I don't know what that is either, but it's something. 
<laughs> you get lots of little elements in here. I love using these letters. I've made banners with them. I love personalizing cards. But for the Epic Celebration stamp set, I really decided that I wanted to spell out the word epic. So I've got the letters here. And before we die cut these into the smaller white layer that I gave you, we're gonna stamp them up. And again, I'm using Dapper Denim Lemon Lime Twist. And I'm just gonna go around and stamp these cool epic tennis shoes in the Dapper Denim first. And it's just kind of a random pattern I've got going on here. And I've got my Stampin' Scrub here, and I'm just going to spray this a little bit with some of our Stampin' Mist. Not only is it a stamp cleaner, but it's a conditioner for your rubber, too. And I like to just kind of stamp that a few times to make sure it's clean. And now I'm going to come in and stamp some Lemon Lime Tennis Shoes. I think I see where I might need to put one more of the Dapper Denim. So again, I'm gonna clean. I, I usually, there. this is a two set. You get two of these cleaners in a case. And I just have one out on my table. I spray the top and then use the bottom to dry. And I'm gonna come in and do just one more right there. I didn't like that little blank space. Okay, I've got my stamp cleaned off. And now I'm going to come in and color in my tennis shoes. And this is where the bleeding ink technique comes in again. I'm gonna leave the white parts white, just like these tennis shoes really are. They had, remember they had those white edges on them. And they're selling these again too. So, you know, things always come back and that's fun. I'm gonna also leave the shoelaces white because once you get the color around here, that really pops. And you might not think you'd be able to color with such a big brush on some of these really small areas, but they have a really nice pointy tip on them. And these aqua painters are fabulous for coloring big things or little. I'm using the smaller of the two. You get two of them in a package. And I like to use the bigger ones for more background techniques where you just need a, you can use a little bigger brush. You don't need anything quite so detailed. Okay, so I'm gonna finish up these little tennis shoes and I'll be right back. Okay, there we go. Isn't that cool? I just really like the way that looks. Um, if you want to, you can color your green shoes also. Like I said, the blue really bleeds easier. So I'm thinking because it's a more, I don't know, bold color, it bleeds easier. But if you do want to color this lemon lime twist, you're going to need to do that a little bit sooner after you stamp it. So your ink is just a little bit wetter. But this is giving us a little color on here, and you can see that. Right? I hope you can see that in the camera. Isn't that pretty? I love these two colors together for um, man cards or boy cards. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add my letters, and this is just gonna say epic. So I'm gonna space these out, and one thing that I really recommend is that you do this on your magnetic platform, because that will help hold your letters in place. And if you don't have one of these magnetic platforms for your Big Shot, oh my gosh, I use this thing all the time, and it really does save me a lot of time and frustration because especially if you're stamping an image and then you're die cutting that image with the special die cut that comes with it, um, and it moves when you put your top plate on, it's, ugh, I hate it. I hate that. So this holds everything in place, which is really cool. And we're just gonna die cut these. I'm gonna run this through my Big Shot. I'll be right back. And I'm just gonna change out, this is my piercing mat. I also sell these. And all I've done is just covered it up with a piece of copy weight paper to protect it so I'm not stamping all over it. And here comes our epic letters. Now I've got a couple great tips for you, especially when you have little pieces like the inside of the P that needs to stay on your card front. Let me get these all out of here. 
I just think this is the coolest technique. And I know that the cards I've sent out using this technique, I always get a huge wow from the people that I send them to because they're like, wow, that is really cool. Okay, so I'm just going to move things aside here. And we are going to bring in our dapper denim layer. This is the layer that I'm going to attach this piece to. And you can do that right away. You want to make sure as you're adding your glue, you do it all the way around the edges like normal. And then you're going to come in here and put glue on these little pieces so that they don't give you any problems by popping up. We're going to center this on our dapper denim layer. Cool, right? Now, remember the inside of the P here? This little piece? I am going to lay my P back in place before I've done anything with any dimensionals or adhesive strips, which is what we're really going to use. I put a little bit of glue on the back of here. I'm going to set that right down in there, and then we can pop that P back out of there. And that's how you get perfect placement on any letters. Like the A has a little insert like this, and I don't know which other ones, but they just do. Okay, here we go. Foam adhesive strips. These are awesome. One thing I really like about them is they're easy to use. You can cut them to length. But number two is they give you a higher 3D effect because these are thicker than our dimensionals. So that's pretty cool. And I have a um, piece that I've cut up and started here. So all you're going to do, I kind of put this up to my letters and see how long do I need this to be. And I need this one to be just a little bit shorter. I cut it while it's right here on the backing. That way it doesn't stick to my scissors and it's just easier to handle. And I'm just going to go through and put some pieces on my letters so that I've got good support under them. So I don't want them to be crushed in the envelope. I want them to get to where they're going and still be raised up nicely. So I'm just going to do that to all the backs of my letters and then I'll bring you back in. I don't want you to sit here and watch me do this because it's just a little time consuming. My video will get too long. So I'll bring you back in as soon as I have all these backings on. Okay, now I've got all my pieces ready to roll here. And all you're going to do is take the adhesive backing off of all of these, just like this. And you're going to set them back in place, just like a puzzle piece. So you want to make sure, like, for example, your eye, oops, hang on, oops, <laughs> attack of the foam adhesive strips. There we go. You want to make sure that your eye goes back in here because you could put this in either way, right? But you want it to match up with your pattern that you already have stamped on the background. Here's our P. And you're just like putting a puzzle back together. So this is a super easy technique. It has a big wow factor. Here we go. What do you think? Isn't that cool? All right, so I have just a couple more things I want to do here. I've got our Dapper Denim 3 8 inch striped ribbon. And I'm just going to cut a length of that here to add just a little bit of pizzazz to the bottom of this card. I realize that my pattern is pretty busy, but I just felt like it needed something to kind of break it up down here a little bit. And I always like to use real tape, like real tape, to put my ribbon on. If you're using a tape runner on the back and pushing your rib ribbon over the back, lots of times those will fall apart. And you probably wouldn't know that if you're just making cards and sending them out. But as a demonstrator, I get a lot of swap cards where people use their tape runners to put that ribbon on the back and they fall apart. And there are people handling them, mind you. But still, I don't want my ribbon to fall apart, so I use the tape. I just tied a single knot around here. And then remember these scraps that we had? I am going to take the greeting that says, here's to an epic celebration. I stamped it in Versamark ink and put white embossing powder on it. And through the magic of TV, I have that right here. I'm using the one and a quarter inch punch to center that and punch it out.
And then we've got our new one and three eighths inch scallop punch. And that's what I used the scrap of lemon lime twist for. And I'm just going to glue these whoops, two pieces together. And for this, I'm just going to use our Stampin' Dimensionals. I'm going to put one at the top and one at the bottom on the back of my scalloped layer. Remember, if you stick your fingernail in the middle of these, the edges will curl up and you can get the backing off of them better. I know I've shared that tip a lot with you, but sometimes I forget to do it. and It's just always a good reminder. I'm just going to put this right on my card wherever I feel that it fits, and it kind of fits right in between the I and the C here. Isn't that just a nice little addition to the front of our very busy card? It kind of focuses the card a little bit. And we're ready to put our card front on and have a fabulous Eclipse card, perfect for the men in my life or the boys. Fun, fun, fun. Isn't that neat? There we go. Happy birthday. Here's to an epic celebration. Epic celebrations, again, a free stamp set. Um, if you're in the U.S., you can order this from me if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I'd love to earn your business. If you're in any of the other countries, you're going to need to find a demonstrator in one of those countries to order from. But again, this is free in the U.S. with a $50 order. Now let me show you what else I made. I have two different cards to show you using the adorable Party Pandas. This, I think, is my favorite set. There's a lot of them that I love because I really do love the Epic Celebrations too, so I can't even say which one's my favorite. But here's one that says fun, where I've stamped all three of these little bears on my card. I use my aqua painter and a little bit of smoky slate down here to add a ground. I also use my aqua painter to color in the hat and the little heart on the envelope here and my balloon. And then in um, the Epic Celebration stamp set are these little dots. That's what I used for the confetti on the top of my card. And then here is the adorable inside. So I have to show you these little images right down here I die cut out of Lemon Lime Twist and Berry Burst and that's this. And I believe this is meant to be the uh, multiplication symbol if you were going to do something with math using the large letter, letter framelits. So that's where that's coming from. And again, I stamped those little dots from the front right here. And then, I know I'm just full of it today, aren't I? <laughs> full of good things, that's good. Because I wasn't sure if this was just a little too busy maybe for some people's taste, I wasn't, I, I just didn't know. I made another one where I didn't put the confetti at the top. I put it down here as the ground. So which one do you guys like better? The one with confetti or the one without confetti? I added a little of uh, our black and white striped baker's twine and then I wanted to show you something. See how my twine is curled and it just comes down and it's so nice and cute? You can take your bone folder and you can curl your baker's twine just like you curl ribbon. Just hang on to it and pull it through like that and it'll curl up so it looks really cute too. And here we go. So we've got three great Eclipse cards for the Eclipse technique. We've got a ink bleeding technique that I've shown you today. I hope you guys learned something new and I hope you try this out because it's really fun. When you order the large letter framelits. This is your opportunity. You can get both of these stamp sets if you add just a little something like some baker's twine or the foam adhesive strips. I highly recommend those. These are great for making shaker cards too because you have these long strips that you can go around the outside of your square. You can shape them for your circle. But when you order these, these are $99 and if you add a little baker's twine or the foam adhesive strips, you bring your order to $100, you can get both of these stamp sets for free. So I love free stuff. It is the most wonderful time of the year. 
And please remember, click down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You don't want to miss anything I have coming out. I do have some um, videos made already for some of the new products, so I'm excited to share that with you. And remember, if you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I'd love to earn your business. You can pop me an email at kelly at stampabove.com. And this is my blog link right up here in the right top right corner. Um, while you can't click on that and go any place, it just shows you my blog link. So you can type that into a search engine, go find my blog. You're going to find lots of great ideas on there. I love to make 3D stuff. Um, I do a lot of videos. I love techniques. So you're going to find just a library of great ideas on there and all the ordering links to order these products. I will have them on my blog, so you can just click on them. It'll take you right to my Stampin' Up! store. Please make sure you continue on on the blog hop. Go back to my blog if you've gone away from it, and click on the Next button so you see what's next. We've got everyone doing Eclipse cards today. It is going to be a ton of fun. I can't hardly wait to see what they have created. So I'm going to head there now. You make sure you do that, too. Have a great day. Bye-bye.